I've been asked a few times now about the PC system that I've built to go inside my new motorhome. Um, this is so I can work from the van I work online. So if I can have a computer with a reliable internet connection working in my motorhome, I can work down the beach instead of always being stuck in this little office. Um, so I thought I'd make a quick video. As I say, it just shows how the system works and it working. Right, so this is the PC without its casing on. Um, I'll just run through some of the components that are in it and maybe that will give an idea of how the thing works. Um, it's powered from an Intel i3 processor, a 2100T, that's under here, under the heat sink. Um, it's got 4GB of Kingston RAM and the motherboard's an ITX motherboard and it's an MSI H61 board. Um, whole system is running Windows 7 32-bit. I didn't see any point in putting the 64-bit one into a small machine, plus I had a copy of the 32-bit just kicking around that I wasn't using. The thing that really makes this system work, and I hope the camera picks it up, is that. That's the power supply. Um, just a little tiny, it's called a Pico power supply. This one's the M3 ATX board, it's 125 watt. This plugs straight into the 24 pin plug on the motherboard and this is a buck boost power supply so it can run on any voltage straight off the battery, any voltage between 6 and 24 volt. So there's no transformers um, and if you get a sudden power boost through your battery or it goes a little bit low it's not going to do the computer any harm. For a hard drive I can just about see it through there, it's underneath there. Um, for the hard drive, I went for the Samsung SSD 256GB, sorry 250 gigabyte. The reason I went for an SSD is um, normal hard drives, mechanical hard drives don't like being bounced around once they're actually, once they're on and there's a good chance I'll have this running while the van's moving as well. Plus SSDs are a lot, lot faster and I don't want to be waiting around for the PC all the time. Um, what else can I show you in here? Might be of some use. The, the heatsink fan here, that's a Noctua. Um, I'm a little bit over the top on cooling generally. Um, this is a Noctua, Noctua NHL9i um, and it's specifically built for lower power processors which the i3-2100T is and I've also got another little knock to a fan in the front just to expel air out and sort of draw it away. In the front this all gets covered up but in the front um, you have two USB um, ports on this case this is an M350 case it's all aluminium it's a nice little case actually and they're not very much, they're not very expensive so I thought in the front I'd add a WinTV stick, which I also had kicking around, and that'll turn this little machine into a media player as well. Um, the little thing in front of that, if the camera picks that up, that's a Logitech unifying receiver, and that's what um, connects the keyboard and mouse to this little machine. Um, for the WinTV card, um, instead of just having it sort of, you know, wires kicking around everywhere, I decided to route a um, cable through the machine and then out the back. So now I can just plug an aerial straight in out the back. It's quite a basic little motherboard because I wanted something low power. Um, but it does have an HDMI port so I can connect straight to my TV that's going into the van. Um, it's got four USB ports, an Ethernet port basic sound ports and if you do want to use a PS2 mouse or keyboard it can take those as well. Over here that's where the DC power plugs in onto the van and that just runs through the front and straight into the little power supply. Um, I think what I'll do 
is get this put back together and then I'll get some of the other components that I'm using in this system to make the Wi-Fi work, that sort of thing. Um, I'll show you what I'm using there and then probably boot the system up as well and maybe put it on a watt meter so you can see just how low power this is. Right, well I've got the system all back together now. Um, so you can see the front of the case is back on, the casing's all back on. It's also now all wired up. I um, just thought it might be useful to give you an idea of the size of this system. That's a standard 120mm fan. It really is very, very small, this little computer. It's obviously what you want for a motor home where space is premium. Um, the other bits we've got on this to make it all work, um, obviously firstly we've got the monitor. Uh, that's a 24 inch LG screen. Um, I looked for one that runs off a power supply so I could, an external power supply so I could plug it straight off the battery. Um, I couldn't get too much information on this monitor when I bought it and when it came I found it wasn't 12 volt it was 19 volt. So. I ordered off eBay this little thing here. Now this is a converter. This takes 12 volt or um, I think it's anywhere between 9 volt and 24 volt uh, from the battery and converts it to whatever voltage I set it at by adjusting this little screw here. It's all been fully adjusted and it runs at exactly 19 volt now. It's been tested with a battery fairly flat. It's been tested when the battery's on full charge as well, so it's putting out 14 and a half volts. It doesn't fluctuate, it sticks at 19 volt, which is what you need for something like an LED screen because they're really voltage sensitive. Um, I've set up a little test bench in here so I can get it all working before it gets put into the van. So that's just obviously a fuse box. Um, little sound bar at the front there. This system is connected through the sort of car stereo that's in the van as well but if I don't want to have to have that on and I just want to put the little speaker on you know it saves a bit of power that's what that's there for. Um, over here I've got the Wi-Fi antenna. Um, this again off eBay I think it was about 50 quid. It um, pulls in a well, they say, they claim that it pulls in a Wi-Fi signal anywhere up to about two kilometres. I would imagine that's line of sight. Um, I have tested it out and about a bit, um, and so far it's been brilliant, to be honest. It's the best thing I've bought. Uh, this is all wired off an old car battery at the moment, and although the my that's my charger actually that's going in the motorhome, the SeaTec MXS25, although that's not switched on at the moment. Um, well, yeah. That's just a watt meter to show what sort of drain we're getting. Now everything's on standby at the moment and you can see from the figure in the top left corner we're at about 0.1 amps which I don't think is too bad actually for something on, when it's all on standby. That's the monitor, the screen and everything. Um, I think what I'll do now is I'll set up a tripod Actually, now I'll show you a couple more bits we've got here first as well. Um, these two little USB sticks, the one on the left, that's a 3G um, stick. Um, that just takes a normal SIM card. And if I can't get Wi-Fi somewhere, the idea is hopefully I'll be able to get 3G instead. Um, this one takes an aerial port, and I've already fitted an external 3G aerial to the roof of the van. The little um, stick to the right, that's another Wi-Fi adapter. Um, now obviously obviously um, this antenna's already got a Wi-Fi adapter in it so that's what's bringing the internet into the into the motorhome. What this stick does is then retransmits the Wi-Fi signal to I think it's a 30 foot radius of the machine and creates its own Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, Right, I think what I'll do then is I'll set this up on a tripod now and then we'll switch the machine on and show you it running. Right, so we're on the tripod now. Um, at meter I don't think it'll get picked up by the camera but it's still sitting at about 0.1 amps with everything on standby. 
switch it on now and hope it all works I suppose. Ignore the crackling, the soundbar speaker is only like a fiver off eBay, it's not very good quality but as I say it's only for a backup anyway. I have flicked the battery charger on because the battery um, isn't very good, it's an old car battery. So at the moment we've got about 14.5 volt going, uh, volt going into it but that makes no difference. Okay well that's the system on and it's already connected itself to the net. It's connected itself to my local net. Um, let's try and pick up the BT Wi-Fi network. which isn't from this house by the way, so right, it looks like it's connected, that will need to be signed in though I would have thought if it is. So we'll try and click onto a page, we'll try the BBC page. Nope, we're already signed in and we're in and we're connected to the FON network. Okay at the moment the watt meter is showing about mm, 2.7, 2.8 amps. Uh, 38 watt. Um, so that's with everything running. That's obviously the monitor, the computer, the Wi-Fi adapter is powered off as well, and I've got a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse, and the speaker plugged in. Now, if we click onto something like Netflix, which is um, then powering the the speaker up completely, the wattage does go up. Slightly, um, we'll just click House of Cards and get the power reading. Dan, he provided assistance. Yeah, we're now using about 3.7, 3.8 amps, which isn't too bad, I don't think. I've got to stop that, otherwise, I'll get done for YouTube will tell me to take the video down. Okay, um, now what I think I'll do is I'll connect the other Wi-Fi card up and actually there's not a lot of point in doing that. What I'll do is if I plug in this little thing and I'll show you another little feature of this system. Right, the little thing I plugged in was a Microsoft Xbox controller. Now, this is connected up to a Steam account, so this now does everything that a gaming console does as well, which is, you know, nice if the weather's bad in the van. Um, that's the other side of it, wireless controller. Um, I'll fire it up and show you it working. Okay, we're about to start the game now. It's now running at 4 amps again, uh, 58 watt I think that is. Um, bear in mind this hasn't got a specific graphics card in it. I think that's quite acceptable really for an emote at home. Well that's pretty much it, that's the whole system running, there's not really anything else I can show you, it's just basically a computer. Um, but a 12 volt computer that is running at, I don't know if that's picking it up, I think it's just about 2.7 amps at the moment, 39.4 watts, put that in perspective, the normal light bulbs what, 60 watt, so this is running on about two thirds of the power. That's the computer connected up, the monitor connected up, but everything you can see it's powering all of the wireless devices there. It has got the other wireless card in there. And actually I can show you that. Just grab the mouse. And you see down the bottom there, we're connected to the one that's up the top. Down the bottom, that's our own private network. That means I can connect to it. Say if we've got a, my other half's on a laptop in the van, she can use that. Um, our phones, they'll be connected through the network. We we'll call it Herbie because the van's got a mind of its own. Um, 
yeah, that's absolutely everything connected, everything running, everything working. So, hope that helps. Anyone who does want to put a 12 volt computer together or have one working in their motorhome, time to get it installed.